All right. I'd like to welcome everybody to the October meeting of the Murfreesboro Parks and Recreation Commission. This time we'll call the meeting to order. As always, we'll start with the prayer and pledge of allegiance, and Gloria has agreed to lead us in that. Gloria, it's all yours. Thank you. May we bow in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day, and we especially are appreciative for the blessings that you have bestowed upon our community and this nation. Father, we ask your continued blessings upon the leaders of this great commission, and we ask that you will guide us and protect us with all that we think, do, and say. We want all that we do to go to your glory in every way. We ask a special blessing upon our military, both here in this country and abroad. Bless their families and help us to be supportive of those decisions that will impact everyone throughout this land, this country, and this world. These and other blessings we ask in your name. Amen. 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 May we stand for the pledge. Thanks, Gloria. Everybody should have received their packets earlier this week. Uh, the packet contains the minutes from our September meeting. This time we'll entertain any changes or corrections that uh, someone noticed, and if there are none, a motion for acceptance. I move approval of the minutes. Thank you. I'll second. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Minutes are approved. Mitzi, thank you. We'll move now to new business. Item number one under new business is the consideration of the SportsCom renovation project. Lanny, it's all yours. Uh, Mr. Chairman, members of the commission, good uh, afternoon. It's a pleasure to be here and it's a pleasure to present the next project to you. It's one that we have talked about for several years. Uh, we finally uh, we got it on the CIP project and uh, uh, for the last six to eight months, uh, staff and uh, Johnson and Bailey have been engaged in doing an evaluation of the building, uh, looking at all the areas that needs to be renovated, uh, talking about the usage uh, of SportsCom, the future usage of SportsCom, uh, looking at the allocation of spaces. Uh, and what we've done is uh, put a plan together. And uh, that plan uh, was bid. Uh, we actually issued those bids on August 24th. We opened bids on September the 11th uh, for the renovation of SportsCom. And in your packet, what I've done is I have given you the uh, packet that I have for consideration for City Council tomorrow evening. And I've given you everything that I have um, provided to the Council. In there is a letter from Mr. Lyle Lynch, which outlines all of the renovations um, to SportsCom. It, it's a very extensive list. If you look at it, it goes through the general exterior, the general interior. It goes through the gym, the mezzanine. All of the areas are identified specifically um, in what is going to be done in each one of those areas. Uh, one of the things that we're excited about as a staff is the fact that we're looking at a possible 3,000 square foot addition. Uh, it was um, probably one of the biggest discussions that we had as a staff. We talked about a lot of things, and I've got Mr. Fight here, and I'm going to ask him to come up in just a minute. Um, but there are several things. And Bart, come on up if you want to. There's. Uh, there are several things that happens at SportsCom. Most of you know that that is a place for early voting. And um, the meeting rooms, both meeting rooms are taken. Uh, 
for early voting. I'll let him talk about how much. But it makes it very difficult to, to schedule that space. Uh, and so what we do is we, we block out those particular areas. Uh, our exercise programs, sometimes when we try to put them in there, we have to shift them to the gym. Uh, when we do that, we get complaints from people in the that's working out in the weight areas uh, because they can't hear themselves think, so to speak. <clears throat> the weight area, um, um, you know, is is open to the gym, so all of the acoustics, the basketballs, everything that you hear uh, in the gymnasium. Even uh, we get calls about, you know. Guys get excited when they're playing basketball, and sometimes there's things that are said that uh, people in the weight area are, are not accustomed to hearing. But uh, we, uh, we, we looked at all of those logistical problems, and we looked at the space allocation and what we were doing in terms of program, and um, we, we shifted things several different ways. So we came up with, if we're going to have a 3,000 square foot addition, what best suits going in there? Uh, would that be making a, a, an exercise room, an exercise studio in that area, moving the meetings to that particular area, having that where it's a multifunction space, etc. So at the end of the day, uh, we decided on several things. So. I'm going to stop just a minute and let Mr. Fite talk about some of the things that they have as challenges, I guess, at Sportscom um, with, the, with the current allocation of space, and then we'll move forward from there and we'll talk about the diagrams. But part. Uh, as Mr. Goodwin stated, sometimes out there we have to jiggle a lot of schedules because we have, we have a lot going on out there. What and. Uh, Two or three things that are really going to make this project successful, I'm sure, is, you know, our meeting room was built back in 1987 as for a meeting room, but we've had to use that for all, all kind of activities. Uh, our Zumba class has outgrown our, our room where we usually have it, so we've had to move them into the meeting room. And then, uh, of course, when we have conflicts such as early voting, we, we support early voting. There's no question about it. Uh, but we have to jiggle things and we have to move uh, the Zumba into the gym where we have a lot of basketball players out there early in the morning uh, at 6 o'clock, especially Monday, Wednesday, and Fridays. We have to go in there and they're playing a game or whatever. We have to tell them they need to end here in just a few minutes to get the Zumba class in there. So uh, with this addition, it's going gonna, it's gonna to help us greatly there where we're planning on adding two exercise rooms upstairs, and they'll be permanent. We'll have exercise rooms for all of our exercise programs, uh, and with those right there, we'll have two right there together. We're, going, we're planning on adding more exercise classes, so uh, that's going to help us, help us greatly, where we'll have the meeting room just open just for meetings, and, and people and businesses want to come in and meet. But the addition of the uh, downstairs weight room is going to, going to greatly enhance our chance to uh, you know, maximize the facility. Uh, one thing too, of course, we are adding an elevator to get up to the, to the track, which is great. Uh, get our patrons up there, the ones that can't get up the stairs. We've had a lot of questions about that, but I can tell you that uh, you know, I'm very excited, and I know a lot of our patrons are excited. They, they ask, every day they're asking, but activity is starting to happen, and uh, they're very excited to get this project underway as well as our staff. So. Uh, you know, if you've got any questions, I'll be glad to try to answer them. Okay. Just uh, to continue on, <clears throat> Mr. Chair, members of the commission, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, you've got your list of improvements, and if you'll turn to the diagram, we will walk through that. Um, if you'll turn it to where Johnson and Bailey, uh, you can read that is on the right-hand side. Um, that act that uh, acclimates this to uh, what is north. Most plans are drawn so that uh, north is at the top of the page. But if you look at what it talks about, the second floor plan and what Mr. Fine had mentioned, uh, currently right now the weight area is in the second floor area. What we're proposing to do is create two exercise rooms there with a storage off of those. 
uh, and build that, that wall so it soundproofs um, the activities in the gym from that. Um, that's also an area that we can have uh, children's activities, children's classes. We have a lot of different uh, uh, classes, tumbleweeds, firefighters, all those kind of things. Um, even the talk classes could be uh, in those particular areas. So that gives us a lot of flexibility in terms of permanent classroom, I guess you would say, or exercise areas um, on a year-round basis. If you go to the diagram to the right, you see the 3,000 square foot addition to the front of the building. And then you will see the new canopy entrance as you come in the, right, the entrance that you're accustomed to coming into. And then we build in a new service desk in the middle of what we know as the lobby now. Uh, and the elevator goes in the area where the uh, where the where the lobby where the office is now, and, and it's and it was ironic when we went out there. If you're familiar with SportsCom, you would think that that elevator would be right there on the sidewall as you go in the gym, but it's not. It's actually moved over. It's almost in the middle of that office area uh, to square it up when it gets to the top of the uh, second floor area. And then you um, you see the small exercise area. We've changed that to office. We've got people in closets and everywhere else out there. And then one of the big areas uh, um, that that the staff was excited about is uh, making this little party room for birthday parties and things that we have off of the uh, swimming pool. Right now, what we do if we have a uh, what we call splashtastic birthday party, um, the patrons have their cake and presents over in the meeting area, and then they move over to the pool. This way, they'll be able to do that right there, and we wasn't able to schedule those parties during the time that we were having voting because we had no place for them to have their, their uh, cake and presents. So we think that's a great addition. The other addition is we come down, you'll notice that we've taken what used to be an old basket room um, that really has been used more for storage and we're converting that to a family uh, restroom area, family changing area. Uh, people with disabilities, uh, mom bringing out the son, father bringing out the daughter, those are becoming more and more requested areas. So we're able to put a family changing area in there. And then our concession stand we're making some modification and little expansion there um, because we're doing uh, just over the summer uh, over a hundred thousand dollars worth of sales, and this will give us an opportunity to open two windows instead of one. Any questions over that? I know that uh, that kind of walks you through some of that. Of course, the list talks about the. The, the dressing rooms, uh, the additions, the tiles, etc. That's all in that list. And then if you go to the color renderings, you can see the first one shows you the new entrance. Yes, sir. Lenny, I've got a question about the last page you were on with the plans. Okay. You've got, you've got a hallway just to the south of the uh, party room, it appears, that cuts from the gymnasium to the indoor pool. Right. Would it make more sense to enlarge the party room so that it can accommodate more people and just put a door that opens from it accessing to the gymnasium? Because it looks to me like you've got where you can access the gymnasium and the uh, pool from both the north side and the south end. And right. It looks to me like you could just add space to the party room, unless there's a stationary wall there that can't be. Well, Mr. Smotherman, that's a that's a good thought. What we do with that is we use that as a pass through for the tip and roll bleachers for one thing. The other is we've got maintenance set up in there. We've got a washer and dryer in there. Uh, we've got other maintenance supplies, and there's really no other place in the building. We looked at that. And there's really no other place in the building to 
that we could find to relocate those maintenance services or have that access so we could roll those bleachers from the pool deck to the gymnasium. Yeah. My, my other uh, question uh, implying that we probably should have a door accessing from that party room back into the gymnasium, whether we expand it or not. And the reason being, I'm assuming that there's probably people who have dinners and stuff um, that would might use not want their children next to the pool so you could close that back door off so that the children aren't going in and out next to the pool but they'd be going in and out through the gymnasium i guess would be my from from a safety standpoint i just think it would be safer if we had an entrance and exit on both sides of that room okay and, and certainly it could be locked off from either direction if you needed to uh, but it um it, it looks like a good place for a door. <laughs> okay. All right. We will certainly take a look at that. I think doors are kind of like electrical outlets on the wall. You can't ever have enough of them, it doesn't seem like. But. We'll definitely take a look at that, Mr. Smotherman. Um, and uh, we'll get a price on that. Uh, of course, that w we'll do that after the award. And then if that looks like that's a feasible recommendation, then okay. we'll bring it back for a change order and get that, okay. get that added in. Um, any other questions? Comments? That's a good comment. Do you have any questions or comments of Lanny or Bart? One. Uh, let me uh, let me just continue on. Lanny, let me give one other comment that uh, okay. I think is something that Madeline and I have. I'm going to toot our horn here. We've accomplished in the last year. Uh, we got the uh, two weeks that we've been using that. Uh, exercise room uh, traditionally we've been using it for early voting uh, there won't be early voting in April anymore because of the election date being moved to August so that generates two more weeks out of the year that you'll have access to that room that's so good an, another plus of moving the election date that's good yeah. um, let me just go through this if I can um, of course we opened bids on September the 11th uh, we did receive five bids that were very competitive uh, the low bid was from Barron Construction. Uh, we have uh, vetted him through the architectural engineering uh, firm, uh, and uh, they are recommending Barron Construction. There was also um, six different alternates that we bid. Uh, we bid those mainly because <clears throat> we didn't know what construction was going to look like right now in terms of cost so we picked out some things that uh, we could possibly come back and do at a later date uh, alternate number one is uh, refinishing the gym alternate number two um, is uh, resurfacing the track upstairs alternate number three is a revision to the pool concessions alternate number four we're not recommending which was a, uh, we looked at an energy savings on uh, uh, trying to do the reclaim on the water. Uh, one of the things that we talked about is the controls to do that. It's very complicated. Uh, and, and sometimes even the, the service reps that come out uh, have a hard time trying to figure out what's going on. So to, And when we looked at the cost recovery, uh, it was just a couple of years short of the life of the equipment. So uh, given the fact that it would be very difficult to operate, not really sure on the cost recovery, we're not recommending recommending that one. And then number five is uh, a, a fabric duct sock for the uh, uh, pool area, uh, which would not oxidize or rust. Uh, and then number six is the installation of a service water line, which we're recommending that that come out of uh, the McKnight funds. Um, when uh, when Sportscom was built, the water was tied on to an area that uh, is near the fire hall. And uh, after looking at it, uh, they the fire department has determined that it needs additional water uh, to give it adequate fire protection, uh, where we would access that water would be right at the corner of DeJarnet and Memorial, uh, and that water line would uh, run basically from north to south, uh, and then 
across east over into uh, SportsCom. Um, what that does is that gives us a future water line for the expansion that we looked at in the McKnight master plan where we're upgrading those fields and adding restrooms and doing some other things. So we consider that more of a park water line than a water line for this, even though it will connect into the loop. So um, we are recommending that as well. I did give you a breakdown, a recap of all the expenses. You can see the revenues um, and where the revenues are coming from. We have uh, $3,171,519 in revenues, and you can see the expenses um, for the base bid with the alternates that we're recommending is $3,119,320, which leaves us uh, $52,199 um, in that project. One of the other things I want to tell you as well is when we do these renovation projects, we usually put a contingency in just because when we get into them, we uncover things that we weren't expecting to uncover. And so there's additional expenses. Uh, and so we try to build those in into, into a contingency. So there's $100,000 in the bid, in the base bid for contingency. So with 100000 and the addition, we have $152,199 in case uh, there's other things that needs to be corrected during the renovation. Okay. And so that is my recommendation, Mr. Chair. Any other questions or comments regarding the project from Lanier Bart? Hey, Lanier, when approved, when will construction start? That is an excellent question, Mr. Miller. Um, we're looking at hopefully getting this approved um, tomorrow night. Um, we're looking at probably another two to three weeks to get the contract, uh, everything resolved. Uh, she will notice to proceed uh, this month. Um, we have a construction schedule that says that we will be finished around the 1st of May 2015 and it will require that we close SportsCom during the months of March and April. Okay. Good question. Bart, were you going to uh, say something? What we're doing, I, I know we're going to try to uh, minimize the disruption of all our activities at SportsCom. And I know uh, I've met with Mr. Tom Sage at, at Patterson. We've got our list of exercise classes, and he had his list, and we're trying to work it out where – if uh, you know our patrons do want to go to Patterson to move our classes over there the best we can and McFadden. So we're going to try to uh, minimize the disruption of, uh, of our activities for those two months. And we're really working hard to have those classes uh, somewhere else so we can keep doing them until we get back into sports come. And I know we made it a priority to be done by the end of May when Borough Beach opens. Cause we, that's our... Okay. Cash cow, we've got to have that open. <laughs> <laughs> Lanny, Bart, either one of y'all are welcome to answer this question. It may be the dumbest question I've ever asked, so it's going to be a good one. Um, the um, request for a new fire service line, we've got an Olympic-sized swimming pool full of water there accessible to us year-round. With a pumper truck, couldn't you just pump from the pool all the water you'd ever need for any fire? Um, I, I'm not sure that that would work. I mean, that would be a question from the swim, from the fire department. But they would have to be able to position uh, their truck in such a way to, uh, to do that. Of course, you know, the deepest portion is next to the building. Um, the rest of it is all shallow, uh, three and a half feet or less. Uh, I don't know, it's a good question, but uh, I know that uh, in the review, uh, they, wanted, uh, they wanted that loop line uh, okay. to do that. So that, that's what we put in there, Mr. Smothman. That was, that was their request. I was just curious. I, you look at that much water sitting right next to the building, you'd think yeah, it would be and, I, and, I've, I mean, and I'm, I'm 
seen exactly what you're talking about. I, I, I mean, remember when they used to go up. down to Murphy yeah. Spring and yeah. drop in that uh, pool down there and, uh, you know, do hose practice. Yeah. And, and it may be needed for something, irrigation, sprinkler system, something other than than actually fighting a fire. I mean, there's I, technically not much that, that could that burn there, I don't think. That was what they had said and uh, we looked at you know whether we needed to sprinkle and some other things so yeah. all that was fully vetted through uh, okay. Lyle and fire department so I'm just bringing you their recommendation okay question Mylon did you have some yes uh, <clears throat> excuse me I know of the 5b is uh, you did select Barron and I don't know anything about any of these construction companies I know sometimes on the council we have a tendency to always go with the lowest bid not necessarily the best contractors um, I'm sure you've checked into their work, the various projects they've done, and sometimes, you know, the lower bid, they come back to us with a lot of work orders, and they end up costing as much as, you know, other bidders. So as far as their warranties and everything, were you very satisfied compared to the other construction uh, Yes, ma'am. We, uh, they gave us a portfolio. I'm sorry I didn't bring it today. Um, but they have an extensive body of work um, that is very similar to this renovation and other renovations and things that they've done. We feel very comfortable they're going to be able to do that. Uh, I know Mr. Lynch uh, talked to the owner uh, and uh, you know talked about the difference in the bid, made sure that they included certain things. The $100,000 contingency is one thing that he checked to make sure that he didn't leave that out. Uh, but uh, Barron has felt very comfortable. I know they've been to the building. I think they were there yesterday, Bart. Uh -huh. um, they're excited. They're ready to get started with the, uh, with the project. And so uh, uh, we have a very good architect and a very good set of plans. And I know uh, Mr. Lynch, uh, uh, he, he really oversees the project very tightly so if there's anything that is not in there that we have to bring back um, he will vet that very 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 closely and he does have built-in warranties you know like a year out of something right so. right generally speaking in, in every building project you get a year warranty on all labor and materials uh, of course during the uh, during the course of the work, you're covered by what's called a performance bond, which is much like an insurance. Right. Uh, so if, if, if they do not perform to the level that is necessary, uh, then there are other legal steps that can be taken to make sure that we're covered. Yeah, I'm okay with that. I just know sometimes um, projects start, and I know things unforeseen things come up that right. they can't predict. but. I know sometimes we have work orders, work orders, work orders, and they end up coming up to as much as second and third bid or so. If you recommend that, uh, I'm fine with that. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Good point. Penny? Lanny, where's Back Bearing Construction located out of? Nashville. Nashville, okay. That, that's one of the folks that we seem to have been trying to make sure here lately that their accessibility to us and location seems to that be is a, right. a real yeah, asset. Right. Nice. Brentwood, uh -huh. Brentwood. Mm -hmm. and, um, and, and that they've got experience in this particular field, and you're saying that they do have experience in building gymnasium and athletic-type structures. I know I know. He, he mentioned to me yesterday they're currently working on a building in MTSU, uh, and also they've done a, a recreation center around the Brentwood area, and in the portfolio they gave us, it's very, it's very impressive. What they've done, the work, the work that we've seen. All good questions and comments. Any others? If there are none, in a motion for acceptance of the bid as presented. I'd move that the bid be accepted as presented. And a second. I have a motion and a second. <coughs> Excuse me. Any other discussion? All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed. It's approved.
Nice, Bart. Bart, you can just stay up. You got the next two, I'm, buddy. I'm very honored to be have Sportscom Day today here. Well, to Bart's going to give us a recap of the summer out of Sportscom, and then uh, going to bring a couple of considerations for holiday specials on uh, monthly and yearly passes. Bart. All right, Mr. Chairman and members of the commission, today what I want to do is give you a brief uh, recap of our summer activities at Sportscom and touch on some of the highlights. Uh, we kicked off our summer season on Saturday, May the 24th, as we opened Burrow Beach. And as usual, it was a capacity crowd. We moved on to Monday, May the 26th, which is Memorial Day. We had our annual Memorial Madness where we had games, fun, uh, activities, and everything for all the, uh, the beachcomers that came to uh, Burrow Beach. Uh, and, and I'll show you here a little later. Burrow Beach has been a great success. Uh, and I'll show you the figures and uh, uh, what we brought in this past year compared to other years. But it's been a record-breaking record year for us out at... Uh, out at Borough Beach in the Sportscom, and I and I would have to uh, be remiss if I didn't uh, acknowledge our aquatic staff with all the lifeguards and also Mr. Tommy Gregory, who uh, uh, runs a concession stand with his staff. They did a tremendous job this summer, and every time I would go out there, they would be they would be backed up there getting food and uh, and just scurrying around in the concession stand, try to get it out to them. But they did a great job this past summer. And like I mentioned, our revenues is great. It was a record-breaking year. And, of course, all our aquatics programs, as well as our, our swimming pool, from our exercise classes to our swim lessons, uh, were very successful. As we had over 300 young swimmers take part in swimming lessons this past summer. We moved inside on Saturday, May the 31st, as Elaine Mitchell with our athletic staff started our youth volleyball program, which has been very popular, as we had over 85 young Young ladies participated in a six-week season that was played on Saturday mornings at Sportscom. Of course, in the summer, we start our summer camps. In our first one, we work with the uh, Murfreesboro Police Department for our RAD camp, which is very, very successful, as our fine off police officers taught the kids the art of self-defense and how to protect themselves in difficult situations. Next up was our first sports camp, which has been very popular under Thomas Laird and his staff as we have over 50 youngsters sign up for each camp, which we offer five throughout during the summer, as they take a sport in the morning, uh, learn the uh, activity of that sport, and then they go out to the Borough Beach in the afternoon. This, this camp fills up very fast, and once we start our registration at the first, uh, well, in the spring, it fills up faster than any camp we have, so it's one of the most popular ones we have. We also have two guard start camps, in which we teach our youngsters ages 9 through 14 the fine art of lifeguarding and what it takes to be a lifeguard and the responsibility that this very important job requires. We ended our camp season with our cheer camp in late July as our young football cheerleaders get ready for the upcoming season, which is now underway out at McKnight Park. Of course, we have a lot of special events at Sportscom, and of course our biggest is the annual 4th of July celebration under the stars which kicks off with a Rock the Pool on July the 4th at 10 o'clock, and we go to 4.30 there at Burrow Beach. As this year we had an overflow crowd, and then we had over 5,000 people packed that night park in the surrounding neighborhoods to enjoy the music provided by the Mercer Symphony Orchestra. And, of course, we had games and infl inflatables manned by our recreation staff. And, of course, the highlight of the show was a fireworks show put on by Pyro Shows, <coughs> which is always another excellent show for our overflow crowd. Next up was our National Night Out event, which was held throughout the city on Tuesday, August the 5th, as Sportscom was one of the host sites. That is where our community comes together to help get knowledge and how to fight crime in our city. August 23rd, we held the 6th Annual Triborough Triathlon, which, which was held on the grounds of McKnight Park as we had over 300 youngsters would swam, bite, and ran in this very popular event. And I can tell you, Charlie Apesian and Nate Williams with our staff, along with hundreds of volunteers, make this one of the most popular events for youngsters in the mid-state. We also have very popular running groups now at Sportscom, uh, headed by Jennifer Joins. She's got three or four groups. Some of them run it early in the morning at 6 o'clock, some come in the afternoon. But this popular program has, has really skyrocketed under her leadership. Our rentals are very popular at Sportscom, from our pool rentals to our meeting room rentals to volleyball rentals, as well as our pavilion rental next to Borough Beach. I would also like 
to mention that Borough Beach was rented every Friday, Saturday, and Sunday night throughout the summer, as well as our two cabanas, which are inside Borough Beach, which every weekend we're taking maybe two, maybe three uh, over the weekend for, for private parties where you can bring in your group and have a private party under each cabana. One thing Mr. Goodman always looks at is our revenues. As you can see, we did very well this past summer. It was a record-breaking summer for our facility. As the long, hot summer ended, we held our last event at Borough Beach, which was our ninth annual puppy plunge. As we had over 300 dogs take to Borough Beach in a fun and very entertaining three hours on Saturday, September the 13th. As you can see, it's been very busy, and as we enter into the fall and all, we look forward to our renovation and appreciate your support of all our activities at SportsCon. If there's mm -hmm. any other questions or anything, I'll be glad to answer. Anybody have any questions for Bart on his recap? It's a lot going on. All right, Bart, tell us about these uh, the passes. Okay, we're, uh, this year again, we're, we would like to offer the, uh, with your approval, our buy one, get one free for a holiday special, which will take place in December on the monthly or yearly passes. As you can see on the revenues there, uh, this has been very popular with us and also Patterson Park uh, on the buy one, get one free on the monthly or yearly passes. And I'm just asking for your recommendation and approval so we can offer this again uh, at both facilities. Okay. Barbara, when you guys are running this, I assume we'll have some type of marketing or something up just to share with folks the project that's going to be going on at SportsCom and the fact that they'll be able to use these at Patterson. And Correct. Okay. We, uh, me and Mr. Good, we've talked about this, and uh, we've got several options we're looking at to try to uh, maximize their passes, whether we give them a couple extra months at uh, SportsCom or work something out with them at Patterson. But okay, we will good. work with them with all our customers. Anybody have any questions regarding the annual passes? No, I was going to say if no questions, I move for approval. Thanks, man. I'll second. I have a motion and a second. Mm -hmm. Any other discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Bart, thanks for everything. Thank you. Appreciate all you do. Yes, sir. Thank you. Becky, it's that time again. You're up. <laughs> Tell us what's going on. Good afternoon, everyone. Okay, October is extremely busy with Parks and Recreation, and we are starting next week with Fall Break Fun Week. Rutherford County Schools is off next week. I believe Murfreesboro City is as well. And uh, at the Wilderness Station next week, they um, have Fall Break Fun Tuesday, and that's where kids can come and do games and crafts, um, visit with some of the animals and learn about nature, and that's from 10 to 1 on Tuesday. And that is a $5 fee for that program. Then on Wednesdays is all day animal encounters. Approximately every um, 20 minutes, or not 20 minutes, every 30 minutes they will have a animal that they'll highlight and people can come to the wilderness station and learn about the various animals we have. Then on Thursday it's campfire and crafts in the back country and that's from 12 to two and they'll do the one mile hike into the campground for a campfire. And then on Friday is Get Your Feet Wet Friday, and uh, they'll have the um, kayaks out at the Manson Pike Trailhead from 12 to 3, and Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday's events are all free, and that is Fall Break Fun Week at the Wilderness Station. Also coming up on Saturday, October 11th, is the Murfreesboro Half Marathon, and we just wanted to put this up there. Um, the race is full. 3,250 runners have been registered. But uh, we just wanted to make sure that the people who live in the downtown area are aware that that race starts. There's a 6.55 a.m. wheelchair start and 7 a.m. the runners start. Um, and there will be some closures that go down through Main Street, down Maney Avenue, around the square and back than on Rutherford Boulevard and Las Casas Highway, but they can pull this map up on the Murfreesboro, or I'm sorry, on the middlehalf.com if they uh, live in that area and want to kind of check out the road closures for that morning. And also, if you live along the route, we encourage people to come out and cheer on the runners that day as well. 
Then we have the fourth annual McFadden Becky, Ball Fest. Excuse me, but that if you go back to that postcard, mm -hmm. um, that postcard was mailed to every resident along the route so that they would know uh, with information on there. Thank you. I'm sorry. No problem. Yes, we sent out almost a thousand postcards. So, real, and we thought this would be more visual. In the past, it's been just letters. So. All right, then we have the fourth annual McFadden Fall Fest, which is Thursday, October 16th at McFadden Community Center. That is from 5 to 8 p.m., and that is free. They'll have a DJ, moon bounce, carnival games, T-shirt walk, and more. And it's also a great opportunity if anybody hasn't been out to come see the newly renovated McFadden Community Center on Thursday, October 16th. Then the next evening, on Friday, October 17th, we have the Spooky Splash at Patterson Park Indoor Pool. That's from 6 to 10, and that is for ages 7 to 13. Um, we strongly encourage pre-registering for that, but um, it's $5 if they pre-register, 7 if they come the day of, and they will just have all kinds of games and activities in the pool area for them at the Spooky Splash. Then uh, one of our favorites, we have Old Scream Road, the Haunted Hayride, and that is at Barfield Crescent Park, and that will be Wednesday, October 22nd through Saturday, October 25th. And that starts at dark. They sell tickets till 9 p.m. each night. It's $5 per person if they dare ride the Haunted Hayride. Then um, in conjunction with that on Friday and Saturday, October 24th and 25th, we have the Not So Haunted Trail, which is based on the book Countdown to Fall. They act out a scene along the trail. That is not scary, and it is strongly encouraged for those that are younger or those who are faint of heart to go to the Not So Haunted Hayride. And that's $4 a person, and that's Friday and Saturday from 5 to 7 p.m. Then also Friday and Saturday, we will have our carnival, and that's from 5 to 9 p.m., and there will be carnival booths. There is um, a fee for the carnival tickets, but it's free to attend. And then there'll be costume contests, cakewalks, um, a lot of fun. And we'll, some of the activities will be down where people wait for the haunted and not so haunted hayrides as well. So please join us for the Barfield Bash. The entire, all three activities run Friday and Saturday, October 24th and 25th. Then on Saturday, October 25th, we have our 38th annual Harvest Days, and that will be at Cannonsburg Village. They'll have old-time demonstrations, storytelling, hay rides, bluegrass music, blacksmith demonstration. They'll have crafters. It is free to attend, and that is from 10 to 4 p.m. Saturday, October 25th at Cannonsburg Village. Then we have trick-or-treating at our fall celebration and hayride at Cannonsburg Village on Friday, October 31st from 2 to 5 p.m. It is $2 per person if they're going to trick or treat through the village. Um, usually it's just free to w stroll through the village and check everything out, but if they want to uh, trick or treat, they can just go to the visitor center and get an armband. And that is from 2 to 5 Friday, October 31st at Cannonsburg. Same day, Friday, October 31st, from 5 to 7 p.m. in the Patterson Park Gym will be the Preschool Pumpkin Patch. And that's for ages 2 to 3, and that is $3. And uh, Miss Trina sets up um, little trick-or-treat areas, some carnival games, cake walks, and that is from 5 to 7 at Patterson. And for all of these programs and many, many, many more, you can uh, call our office at 890-5333 or download our rec connection at murfreesboro.tn.gov slash parks or look up one of our Facebook pages. That was just a highlight of our special events in October. We have athletic signups, youth basketball, all of our regular programs going on. So I strongly encourage people to get a hold of our fall rec connection guide so they don't miss out on anything this season. All right. Any questions for Becky? It's a busy month. Yes. <laughs> Thanks, Becky. Thank you. All right, that's the last item under new business. Is there any other business to come before the commission? If there is none, we stand adjourned. Thank you. <laughs>